Rockstar really did their homework to create Red Dead Redemption 2. The sheer attention to detail makes it the most engaging adaptation of the Wild West in gaming history. But how did Rockstar manage to make the world feel so authentic? I'm Sydney with The Leaderboard, and today we are going to talk about all of the real-world influences on Red Dead Redemption 2 in Lore Explained Red Dead Redemption 2. Let's saddle up. When the West was wild. When news broke that Red Dead Redemption 2 would be a prequel and not a direct sequel, many fans started scratching their heads. The ending of Red Dead Redemption 1 had the perfect setup for a sequel, so why go back? Well, Rockstar has since explained the reasoning behind this stylistic choice. First off, Red Dead 1 was meant to be a symbolic end to the Wild West, with John Marston being blackmailed into hunting down the last remnants of his gang, literally killing the past. The first game took place in 1911, which is considered the last decade of the American frontier. So, if the sequel directly followed it, then there would be less Wild West to work with. In 1911, the U.S. government was moving in to claim the settlements that had been built during the frontier days. Modern civilization was slowly encroaching and taming the chaos of the era. So Rockstar decided to set the sequel 12 years prior in 1899, when the Wild West was beginning to die down. This gave the studio a more open frontier and an engaging narrative framework to work with. In Red Dead Redemption 2, the man with the plan, Dutch Vanderland, and his gang struggle to survive as the shadow of the U.S. government looms over them. The government hunting down once noble frontier vigilantes is well documented and was a great influence on the Rockstar development team. So much so that the release date for the game, October 26, is also the anniversary of the infamous 1881 shootout at the OK Corral in Tombstone, Arizona. For about 30 seconds, the Clayton McLaurie gang had a violent exchange of gunfire with local law enforcement. The gang members that weren't shot dead headed for the hills, never to be heard from again in Tombstone. The spirit of that shootout is captured in the overall themes of the game. Pinkertons vs. Outlaws For an outlaw, rival gangs and local lawmen weren't the only ones to watch out for. By the late 1800s, the Pinkertons were on the prowl. In Red Dead Redemption 2, there's no shortage of Pinkertons, and yes, that might sound familiar if you've played Bioshock Infinite. The Pinkertons is a real organization that exists today, although they're not the gunslingers of old any longer. During the Civil War, founder Alan Pinkerton worked for the Union gathering intelligence against the Confederates. In the late 1800s, they worked to curb labor strikes as hired guns. They worked for law enforcement too, and were known to have five bombed outlaw Jesse James's mother's house. Talk about taking it to the next level. Someone tell these guys to chill. Speaking of outlaws, you've got plenty of those in Red Dead Redemption 2. And like in the game, they roamed around in gangs raising hell in the West. The Duel in Dalton gang was very real and has one of my favorite alternate names, the Oklahoma Hombres. See, people over a hundred years ago had cheesy weird humor too. They sound a lot like the Vanderlyn gang known for robbing banks, stagecoaches, and trains. Apparently, some considered leader Bill Doolin a Wild West Robin Hood, not unlike how Dutch's gang consider themselves. After all, the Vanderlyn motto is, We shoot fellas, is need shooting. Save fellas, is need saving. And feed them, is need feeding. Or what about Butch Cassidy's Wild Bunch? They're one of the more famous outlaw gangs known for robbing similar targets as the Vanderlyn gang. And just like Dutch and his damned plan to get to Tahiti, well, the fellows in the Wild Bunch had the same idea. They were being chased by Pinkertons, but several members of the gang managed to flee to Argentina. Let's hope there was no real life equivalent of the Murphy Brood or the Skinner brothers. I shudder at the thought. Lead Dead Redemption. With all the shooting in Red Dead Redemption, you know Rockstar made sure those guns in the game are period accurate. But brace yourselves, history buffs. They are a hell of a lot more expensive in the game than they were in real life. Let's browse an old-timey gun catalog for proof. And yes, you could buy a gun from a catalog. In around 1899, a 12-gauge double-barrel shotgun would go for anywhere from $7 to almost $20. Talk about cheap. In Red Dead 2, the standard double-barreled shotgun comes at a starting price of 95 bucks. If shotguns aren't your thing, the Winchester repeating rifle, with its lever action for speedy shooting, would run you around 11 or 12 dollars. That Winchester is the basis for the Lancaster repeater found in Red Dead Redemption 2, which starts at a whopping 135 dollars in-game. The Springfield rifle and Carcano rifle share the names of the real-life guns they're modeled after. Sometimes Rockstar just takes creative liberties with their names, and sometimes Sometimes they aren't so creative with their names either. But if you're anything like me, you'll be using pistols most of the time. You can shoot them fast and you can dual wield them. And there's tons of them too. Both the Cattleman Revolver and Double Action are based on models manufactured by Colt. Colt actually still makes firearms today. Back then, a typical Colt revolver wouldn't cost more than about $15. In the game, the Cattleman and Double Action revolvers start at $50 and $65 respectively. Of course, 
Why bother paying any of these inflated prices? In Red Dead 2, you can just steal guns or kill somebody with the gun and then loot it off their corpse. Well, at least the ornate illustrations and detailed descriptions of the guns are period accurate. Animals of the West. You know what's better than stealing guns? Stealing horses. Grand Theft Auto is to cars as Red Dead Redemption is to horses. Just like with Grand Theft Auto's vehicles, Rockstar has outdone themselves with the accuracy and wide range of horse breeds in Red Dead 2. There are over 20 horses in the game that you can tame and ride around. And let me just say, I love those big dumb dogs. The history of horses in America goes back hundreds of years, even thousands of years. The horses native to North America are believed to have died out over 10,000 years ago. New horses were reintroduced to the land with the discovery of the New World. In the game, the Shire horse is a real breed, like all the others. This type of horse was imported from the United Kingdom to the United States in 1885, 14 years before the game took place. So they'd be quite the new breed around that time. The Arabian horse is a favorite that makes its way into Red Dead 2. I bought one for over $1,000 in the game, and it died almost immediately when I got ambushed. Hooray, it's a fun game. Sob story aside, it was apparently a good war steed worthy enough to be one of George Washington's mounts. They were introduced in the mid 1700s, so folks in the Old West would have been well acquainted with these horses. Other horse breeds, like the Appaloosa and Mustangs, are synonymous with the Wild West. The Appaloosa is a famous mount from the time, and nothing says America more than a Mustang. Oh, sorry, I got mixed up with cars. Ironically, Mustangs were imported by the Spanish, so maybe they're not so American after all. Still, if you're looking for a solid horse in the game, you can't go wrong with either of these two breeds. Although I will say, maybe head into a stable and make some changes to their mane or tail. Can't tell you how many times I accidentally got on someone else's horse in a crowded town and was immediately shot at. There's no dialogue option to say, sorry, oops, wrong horse, sorry. Of course, horses aren't the only animals roaming around. The illustrations of the animals found on the Red Dead Redemption 2 website are reminiscent of old 19th century Britannica drawings, and the animals themselves are accurate to the period and area. The buffalo, once an abundant species, was nearly wiped out in the Wild West. You can see these beefy boys roam in the plains of Red Dead 2 and hunt them if you're so inclined. Nowadays, you can't find these majestic beasts in the numbers they once were. The Gila Monster is a venomous lizard that you can find in the Southwest as well as Mexico. And in-game, you can see them slithering around in the Southwestern portion of the map. You can even find panthers in the Bayou Noir and Scarlet Meadows regions of the map in what we approximate as Louisiana territory. It's great that you can find them in-game, although sadly, only a couple hundred are said to live in the United States nowadays. Dark history. And the realism doesn't stop there. Rockstar also captured instances of America's racism in Red Dead Redemption 2. Nearby Bolger Glade are both the Braithwaite's and Gray Plantations, which are prominent players in the game's story. One can deduce that they were once former slave owners, as their plantations would both be period accurate. Some allusions are more to the point. After the Civil War, the Ku Klux Klan rose in popularity, although by 1871 it had dissolved and wouldn't return to prominence until 1915. But in Red Dead Redemption 2, you can have a random encounter with a group of Klansmen. I mean, there still could have been sex around, since, as we see in the game, they are meeting in secret. The game shows hints of other political issues at the time, particularly women's suffrage. Although it doesn't take a large spotlight in the game, there's a mission where you have to escort women to a suffrage rally because their safety was not assured. In Saint-Denis, you can also find a woman protesting that women deserve the right to vote. Women's suffrage was a topic of debate as far back as 1776, but it gained traction in the 1800s. In 1848, the first women's rights convention was held at Seneca Falls, New York, a revolutionary moment at the time. It wasn't until 1920 that women finally gained the right to vote with the 19th Amendment. It wouldn't have been possible without the efforts of those who championed the cause years before. And we get a little snapshot of this in Red Dead Redemption 2. Perhaps on a more lighthearted note, the railroads are gradually snaking their way through the Wild West. It's a sign of civilization getting a hold on the West, but it's also a great innovation. In the game, you'll see several different railroads like the Southern and Eastern Railway, as well as the Central Union Railroad. You can even see a group of men laying down tracks to expand the railroad. And if you go back later in the game, you can see their progress. The trains run on an in-game schedule, as they would in real life, showing Rockstar's commitment to period accuracy. Hopefully this video has shown you how much work went into creating the cowboy fantasy of mine and your dreams. What details in Red Dead 2 were your favorites? Any cool bits that we missed? Make sure to like and subscribe and join the notification squad. Also check out our timeline of the Red Dead Redemption series. I'm Sydney with the leaderboard, signing off and riding into the sunset. Thanks for watching y'all. Can you put me on a horse? Okay, if you put me on a horse right now, I'll gallop. Put me on a horse, please. My coffee!